Coming up today on Houston Life, we are getting a peek behind the scenes of Broadway's Divine Musical Sister Act ahead of its big premiere at Hobby Center. From where to find the traditional sweet bread to the outdoor art installation at Discovery Green, you can't miss. See how to celebrate Dia de los Muertos around town. Plus, grab your BFF and get ready to sharpen your elbows as the Houston Ballet Nutcracker Market returns. And inside one of Houston's most soulful kitchens, Esther's Cajun Cafe and Soul Food, they are ready. They're cooking up some delicious comfort food dishes, perfect for our fall weather. All of that happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Houston Life on this Monday, November 1st. I'm Courtney Savala. Can you believe we are actually in November? I cannot, cannot. The fastest, slowest year of my life. Hi, everybody. I'm Derek Shore. Glad to have you with us. And what a lovely Monday. The weather is beautiful. Coming off of last night's Astros win, Woo! we're feeling good. We're tired but we're feeling really good. We are feeling good. Listen, so it's gonna be a little bit different today at KPRC too because Dominique Saxa is no longer anchoring here, oh. but we had several chances to say goodbye to her last week, starting last Thursday night at Stake 48. We had That's right, break. it was a lovely celebration. There she is there looking lovely. We had tons of speeches and dinners and blasts from the past. So it was just an unbelievable couple of days to say goodbye to Dominique and, um, that's Lauren Freeman, her, um, and then Chris Gutierrez and his wife Crystal there with Dominique in the middle. And even the mayor stopped by yes. to to give a speech for Dominique and to declare last Thursday as Dominique Soxa Day. We then on Friday at the Rustic Post Oak we got to hang out with with Dee there, and it it really was just a fun, relaxed evening and great to see friends and coworkers out. There's Taisha Walker and Sion Rhodes, our friend Nick, uh, photo bombing in the back there, and you know. Bill Spencer, who's one of my favorite people on this planet, and his He's wife, awesome. Veronica, I finally met her, so we really enjoyed chatting with them, and it was just a beautiful night to be out. Sort of watching the Astros game on Friday night out of the corner of my eye, had to sort of look away several times. We did the same. We just, we had uh, Alma Latina on Friday. We had some other things going on Friday, so that's why we didn't make it out, but it was so much fun, and of course, like, big hollo Halloween weekend. Halloween weekend, which started for us on Saturday. We headed down to our friend Carrie's house. She lives in Museum District. I think we have some video of it. Check out the view from her place, by the way. Unbelievable. She had a little birthday party, so we hung out there, and then we, we had a great time. We dashed home, threw on our costumes, Saved by the Bell, I love the it. new class. I love it. And here's the thing. Brandon was not only really into this very itchy wig, but people were losing it because check out this photo of him in high school. Oh, my word. His hair was sort of like that. Then, this is John. Hard to believe he's an executive at Love Advertising. I know, uh, but that is so, a that's convincing. a great costume. <laughs> he's the I, sale dude. He's, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's at the chiropractor today <laughs> uh, with all those moves. Our friend Tammy did the Zoom call, which I thought was genius. So cute. She, she had a lot of audio issues, though. And Mario is the pinata, so we had a really good time. It was so much fun. I know, we had a uh, Halloween party on Saturday where the boys got out with their friends and trick or treated and then um, I think okay so we did the Dia de los Muertos brunch at B&B oh, Butchers yeah. How was on that? Saturday it was lovely are you Let wearing a marigold you. crown I am I am wearing Beautiful. a marigold crown uh, from uh, Amora flower bar met these two lovely ladies and their husbands I told you I wouldn't remember your names you were supposed to message me on Instagram oh. because I don't remember but I warned them that I was gonna use this photo listen we sh we were bookends to a table that was complete. I was thinking of you the whole time. Aww. Their kids were rolling on the ground. Oh. They were running from side to side. We bonded over this unruly what? table. Why were you thinking? I of was me? just thinking like this is a great conversation. And actually, one of the husbands said, "Y'all need to talk about this on Houston Life." I remember going out to dinner when Bella, who's now 13, when she was about three years old, I was out with my family at a restaurant, and you know, Bella was just sort of doing her thing, face down, licking the floor under the table. Well, something tells me that your sister <laughs> probably, or you, somebody got up, I mean, you know, and tried to 
wrangle her or, you know, do something to get her back in the chair. Oh, yeah, but she also wasn't screaming and causing commotion. She was just quietly licking the floor. Yeah, there was these there was kids were not. That. There was oh, none really? of that happening on They're Saturday. Like knocking things over. It was very interesting. But again, we bonded over the story and it was lovely to meet y'all. <laughs> I expect an Instagram message uh, very soon. And then, uh, so we, I didn't, I dressed up as the sad Astros fan on Saturday. And then Sunday, I dug what? in my closet and was able to find the biker chick costume. Orlando wow. thought I was a pirate. Oh, well, I can see you're kind of giving pirate vibes there. No, look at my PBR. Yeah, okay, there you go. Yeah. Absolute ribbon. That's my friend Crystal. So it was like, don't mess with us. She has superpowers and I'm just nasty. So did leave you, us alone. <laughs> did you have a, like a, a motorcycle you were riding? Yes, of course. And that's AJ's friend, Matthew. They were in their ghillie suits. These oh. like hunting, th there's the whole crew. Oh you don't even know who's who. <laughs> Looks a little cumbersome. It was, AJ had candy stuck to him. I mean, it was, these are, they were hilarious. They were super fun. They would just lay down in someone's yard and just kind of act still. And did they trick or treat on Saturday or Sunday or both? Both, both days. Awesome. Two bags of loot. Two bags. Which, by the way, we found AJ's candy bag under his bed in his room. And Orlando said, uh, absolutely not. Where else do you keep it? That's where I always kept mine. I get, well, we put, we put an end to that. Where does it stay then? In Downstairs the kitchen? Downstairs in the community bowl. So then you can monitor its consumption. And I can take out what I like. <laughs> monitor the consumption. I will bring you our leftover <laughs> Halloween candy because we had exactly one trick-or-treater oh, last know, night. Sad. I know. It was sad. We were all prepared. You we had one, but we're... yet never gave her any candy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a painful story. We thought it was a pack of obnoxious teenagers. And by the time I got to see the doorbell camera, we realized it was this cute little princess. And she was already gone. So we missed broken. her. So I'm sorry, princess, come back to our house tonight. I've got, you know, some By candy the way, for I you. still can't, I'm still giggling over our costumes. Your nail polish. I don't have nail polish remover at home. So this is Houston Life leftovers from Friday. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes, people have been staring at me. But you know, I think nail polish is kind of in for guys. Listen, right and now. that gray, like that gunmetal, is perfect. Uh, yeah. Look well, at Harry Styles. He paints his nails. Okay. Well, yeah. maybe I'll keep it. I love it. Forget By about the, the way, remover. what about the Invisalign trays? Are we taking the polish out of that? No, those will go in the trash. Are you done? Are uh, you done with your braces? The adult brace saga continues. It's really not worth getting into. <laughs> hey, back to Halloween. So Tex also celebrated in Bel Air. He celebrated Halloween. And Tex is so patient with his little costume. Look at him. I feel like he's more patient with other people than us. Maybe so, maybe so. But look, he made a new friend. I love it. He was with our colleague Ryan and Ryan's family as well. There they are right there. There's Ryan it's there in, in the middle. Skeleton. So there you go. That is a large skeleton. Very, but it's super cute. Texi loves a good costume. He does, he does. He's a very, very patient boy. Okay, so the countdown is on. Four. Yes. I have my own internal countdown going on for the Nutcracker Market. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Oh. But for Mariah Carey. Oh, for her album to come back? She's ready for the holidays. Check this out. I mean, it, why does Mariah hate Halloween so much? She's just ready for the holidays. <laughs> she's ready. She is ready. This hit her Instagram account at midnight, so she wasted no time. And it was, oh, you know what? I did see that. My producer, Heather, just told me. Do you all see the package on it that says 11-5? No. What do you think that means? Oh, maybe she's dropping a new album or something? I, it's coming. Maybe a new holiday album? You're kidding. When was this released? 93 or 94 is what... Because I remember, I think I was in middle school, and I would get a blanket and the boom box, and I would put the blanket mm. on the floor, and I would huddle up to the boom box and listen to this album. I know, don't feel too bad for me. I really had a, it was a sad time. But that <laughs> album, therapy session? that album got me through the holidays <laughs> when I was in eighth grade, okay? Listen. But who knew that all these years later, I mean, arguably, that is perhaps the most defining holiday album of all time, right? I agree. And there's something about it every time, no matter if it's the first time or the, you know, 100th time in November that I'm hearing it, it's still great. I'm just saying in November. Oh, like, yeah. You know, I mean, by the time the holidays are, I mean, this song is played so much that I sort of have had my fill by the time the holidays 
I, I, I love it though. It just makes me happy. Although I do feel like it's being pushed on us now. I mean, like somebody, that's a little tease. somebody in my neighborhood posted on their, they're like, hey, sorry, if your kid got Christmas candy last night, it was me and it's fresh. It's not old. We ran out of candy and I had to run, my husband had to run to Walgreens and all they had was Christmas candy. Christmas candy. Yeah, of course. It's all over the stores. It's all over. Listen, you, there's not even a decoration to be found. It's all Valentine's Day now. <laughs> St. Patrick's Day. Well, I've got both fingers crossed. All four fingers crossed. Both you know fingers. what I mean. I have two fing two sets of fingers that are crossed. <laughs> you know what I mean. If she releases a new album, this would be huge. This but is big the, news. She has set the bar very high for herself. I love her, and she looks fabulous, by the way. And still to come, are you a fan of home remedies? You are. Yeah, yeah, perhaps. Why the latest TikTok trend could actually do more harm than good. Oh no, Morning. I like using vinegar for cleaning. It works very well, white vinegar. Also, as the weather slowly not begins balsamic. to cool down. <laughs> not balsamic. <laughs> that would make things dirty. All right, Lauren Kelly is checking out a Houston staple this afternoon for some delicious Southern comfort food. Hi, Lauren. Hey guys, you know, I waited on lunch today so I could take you inside Esther's Cajun Cafe and Soul Food. Take a look at the setup they've got behind the kitchen here. What goes into this deliciousness? Coming up when Houston Life returns. Ooh, somebody get me a fork. You know, I am constantly amazed at young people and how smart they are and energetic Where this is next this going? story <laughs> does not do it for me but here's the thing this is a TikTok trend i'm not telling anybody to go do this i'm just telling you this is what's going on i think we're telling people not to do this right do not do this no but the trend is that people are putting garlic cloves up their noses because somebody thought it was a really great idea to clear your sinuses. Wait, like an entire clove? It's called garlic snot trend on TikTok. They're doing this in an attempt to clear congestion. It's called Flonase, okay? That's how you clear it up, not putting garlic. It's actually can be quite dangerous. And you shouldn't do it. A doctor is quoted in an article that I read here on BuzzFeed that while garlic does have several health benefits, putting large Here's the quote. Putting large clothes in your nose to clear congestion is not one of them. Don't do it. Couldn't they get lodged up there and then maybe cause issues? Well, like I don't think you're like, I mean, you're still seeing it in the video. Like, it's hanging out. They're not, like, pushing it straight up but, in. But what if you go to pull it out and you lodge it up there? I mean, it's Yeah, that's a problem. But I'm saying, like, it's, like, halfway where you could still pull it out. Kind of like cotton, you know, if you break your nose or something or even nosebleed. It's kind of hanging out like that. But regardless... Just don't do it. Don't do don't don't put anything in your nose. Well, don't also do that. a trip to the emergency room not worth it, right? Clonase. Why don't you just I don't know, get some peppermint oil and smell that. I remember I got a button stuck in my ear at church once. We had to leave church. Terrible. You couldn't even see it. It was so deep in there. And my mom had this long pair of tweezers. Luckily it worked out, but you know, we were all teenagers once. Are adults doing this too? I don't know. It's wrong. Okay. Teenagers, I think they were little kids, right? Weren't you a little kid when that happened? No, I was 17. Oh, well. I know. Not that I remember it. I remember as, the M&M's. M&M's up the nose are always a big one. What do you say we bring in Joe Sam? Let's do it. Okay. I can go on and on about this one. All yeah. right, Joe. You've I got our question of the day. <laughs> I think we all can go on and on. I mean, just the reflexes from that will make me gag. Okay, so we want to hear from you guys. What's the home remedy you tried that ended up being a total hashtag fail? And of course, you know, we have all of those great answers coming in from our viewers on Facebook. Nancy, she writes in, baking soda and water paste on poison ivy. Bad idea. I've never heard of that one before. Hmm. That's something that I might have to try. But on poison ivy. I've, I've done that. that one. Now, that one is good. That one is a worker. Now, oh. Jessica, she writes in, when I was a kid, I had bronchitis, but my pediatrician took forever to diagnose me. My mom tried every home remedy she was given. The worst was purple onion that was mixed with sugar. Oh, boy. Then I was given the juice by the spoonfuls. Not only was it gross, but it didn't help at all. I can imagine that. Purple <laughs> onion and sugar. Ugh. Actually sounds kind of good. Oh, purple. really? If you cook down purple <laughs> onions, they caramelize. They get sweet. Mm, I don't know if I would try that one. But hey, everybody's doing it. And Michelle, she writes in, when I had the flu, my aunt told me to cut an onion and put it in my nightstand. It made the room just smell. 
Oh. Well, that's hey, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that make you cry? I would think so. You're crying out the flu. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I guess you know, spreading it in the atmosphere. Maybe. I don't know how to, I, these home remedies are something else. We want you guys to head over to the Houston Life Facebook page, join that conversation. We'll share more of your comments a little later on in the show. Any home remedies that your parents did, or you've been trying for AJ or Connor, or, or anything that you and Brandon tried? I think we're gonna have to think about that one. Yeah, Joe. this is a hard one. I know. We'll get back to it. Let's do that. All right, Joe, thanks a lot. Well, this is a great place. Esther's Cajun Cafe and Soul Food has been Houston's home for warm Southern comfort food since 2008, which stems from Chef Esther's love of family and food, bringing it all together. Yeah, they are located in the Heights. It's a family owned and operated eatery, also known for its big hearted hospitality and down home deliciousness. Lauren Kelly is there showing off some of their comfort food, which is really perfect now, Lauren, as the temperatures will eventually get cooler. Hey, you guys, the temperatures are slowly dropping and we're grabbing on as hard as we can because what tastes better in cooler weather than southern and soul food comfort food and no one better than the queen herself, Queen Esther, to talk to us today about it. We are here at Esther's Cajun Cafe and Soul Food, but I want to mention this is just the third of already two other restaurants open in the area. Yes. So uh, it's really hard for me to stand in front of you guys with this food behind us. Some of the most popular items on the menu are basically some of the dishes you grew up with, right? What are we looking at? We're looking at our oxtails, Cajun oxtails. I see the Cajun pasta we know for sure, the cornbread. Yes. And, and this one is? Crawfish etouffee. Oh, my goodness. And, and then I this behind us is just white rice. Corn. Sweet potatoes, some people call it yams, uh, and uh, collard greens. Now, this restaurant's not open just yet, but we're, we were hoping for November. It's getting pushed back because you guys do so much for Thanksgiving. You're cooking the turkeys all. Like, yes. you're now hoping for what date? January 5th. Okay, so until then, she's got this restaurant to start getting ready. Now, Derek and Courtney have some of this food to try. They have this right here in studio. So I, I, I know that I've been smelling it. Derek and Courtney, what do you guys think? You want to take a bite of your crawfish? I uh, know. Is this crawfish it or is this shrimp? It smells delicious. That's crawfish and shrimp. Oh, mm. it's crawfish and shrimp. It's so good. But coming up a little bit later on in the show, you guys, Esther, the queen, is going to take me in the kitchen and show me how to make some of that Cajun pasta right there. Yes, most definitely. Oh. No secrets will be shared until later on in the show. So well, back to you guys. Enjoy this food. It smells so good and it tastes good, too. I'm going to save some of this for Brandon. Thanks, Lauren. We'll see you in just a bit. Good. When we come back, how we can all celebrate Dia de los Muertos in Houston and learn the true meaning behind this tradition. And as we go to break, a reminder that tomorrow is Election Day. KPRC2 will be hosting a phone bank with the League of Women Voters Houston. Starting tomorrow, volunteers will be answering your calls from 11 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. More information is online at clicktohouston.com. We'll be right back with more Houston Life. Dia de los Muertos is a celebration of life and death, and the Bayou City has plenty of ways we can all celebrate. Houston blogger and podcaster Mariana Cano is here with her three recommendations so we can all celebrate this festive holiday. It's great to see you, Mariana. Great to see you, too. Thank and you so much for having me. We're glad to have you here. Yo Mariana is a very popular blog here in Houston. It's all things Latina, all things Houston. We met at the Manil yes. a couple months ago, so I'm That's so right. glad to have you here today. And Thank growing you. up, I really didn't know much about this holiday, Dia de los Muertos. It's so beautiful and so lovely. Break it down for people who are unfamiliar. It's so beautiful because Dia de los Muertos is a celebration where people gather and get together to honor and pay respect to the people that are no longer with us, to our loved ones. So um, families typically do this by creating ofrendas or altars with all these very interesting elements. Each of the elements actually have a very interesting meaning behind it. And they place pictures of your loved ones, uh, uh, their favorite food, their favorite objects, the little um, sugar skulls, and it end, ends up being really like a piece of art, really. It does look so beautiful. The marigolds are the traditional flower, and I think such a lovely way to keep someone's memory alive. Exactly. Right here in Houston, there are a number of ways. Again, we mentioned you have three tips yes. to help us celebrate, and the first one is at Discovery Green. 
It's that's such a beautiful outdoor exhibit happening right now. It's going to be there on view until Sunday, November 7th. But it's uh, it's called Celebración de Vida by Mexicranos. Okay. And Celebración de Vida means celebration of life. And they are 10 large scale skulls spread out around the park. And they're just beautiful. They're wow. actually made by uh, Mexican artists. They're, wow, they are very, very large. And yeah. so these are spread out all throughout the park for the next week? All throughout the park. Four of them are actually at Avenida Houston, and okay. the other six are spread about like the corners of the park. But I was there last weekend, and we had so much fun. We walked around the park. The park was so, so, so alive, filled with people enjoying live concerts and kayaking and taking pictures with these beautiful skulls. These are great photos, and Thank for you. sure beautiful skulls. All right, moving on to your next recommendation. You say stop by a local bakery to get uh, some something called Pan de Muerto, Day That's of the Dead right. Bread. Yes, you cannot celebrate Day of the Dead without Pan de Muerto. So okay. it's like having Thanksgiving without a turkey. Let's oh. put it that way. <laughs> uh, and this is similar to, like if someone's had a traditional sweet bread, this yes. is similar? Exactly, but it's made out of, it has anise seeds and orange zest. So if actually the aroma is really delicious. I don't know what you think. And um, mm. actually, there are many bakeries around town where you could get this bread, but it's really, um, it, these are from Tierra Caliente, which is a very popular one. And there, there's another one called El Bolillo, where it actually El Bolillo is right in front of the Houston Farmers Market. Mm -hmm. And there you can find everything you need for your ofrenda, like the flowers, the skulls, the decorations, everything you need. Okay, so go to the Houston Farmers Market and check it out because these vendors will hook you up, as you mentioned, with everything you need to create your own celebration at home. Exactly. The bread is very, very delicious. I'm so glad you like it. Weakness for bread. All right, the third one is the Dia de los Muertos parade that that's, happens in Houston. Yes, that's so exciting. We're going to have our first Dia de los Muertos Parade and um, it's going to happen at Sam Houston Park on Saturday, November 6th. The actual parade is going to start at 7 p.m. but it's meant also to be like a festival so you can get there with your family starting at 2 p.m. Wow, that's, that's so cool that we're finally, uh, you know, I, I was thinking, I've never been to this parade, but that's because it is brand new. Okay, before we let you go, we, very quickly, I want to hear about your, your blog, Yo Mariana. You're a mother, you're a wife, you're from Mexico, you're here in Houston. I love how much you love this city. I love Houston, yes. And, and for people who haven't seen the blog, what's it all about? Well, it's basically, it's called Yo Mariana, and I share everything that this wonderful city has to offer. That first photo is from the Manil, I recognize that exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And uh, I share a little bit about food, art, travel, a little bit about everything. Well, it is a great resource for people who are either native or even if you're a transplant, you're looking for something to do. You always have fantastic ideas. Mariana Cano, thank, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Great to see you. And thanks for the bread. That was absolutely of course. delicious. If you would like to connect with Mariana, you can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv, and click on the Scene on Houston Life section. Why don't we check in with Joe Sam, who has more on a must-see musical hitting the Hobby Center this weekend. Hey, Joe. Hey, Derek, that's right. Coming up, a divine intervention will happen when Sister Act, the musical, hits the Hobby Center. Find out what its lead actor has to say about this production. And, of course, you know we're going to get a check of what's coming up for the news at 4, including some World Series facts ahead of Game 6. Houston Life is back in two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you at just about 3.30. Yeah, sounds good. Earlier today, we asked, what is a home remedy you tried that ended up being a total fail? Eduardo writes in, using pineapple for a cough. Huh, that's one I've never heard. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, Varielle writes in, garlic oil for ear infections. OMG, my child ended up with worse <gasps> fungus infection. And so many moms rave about garlic oil. Wow. Interesting. Okay, and this next comment, folks, you may just want to close your ears and look away from your televisions. Carolyn writes in, when I was young and had an earache, my grandmother would squeeze granddaddy long leg juice in my ear. What does that mean? I mean, I'm spider assuming juice? like spider juice, like they would crush the spider. So, Carolyn, I'm assuming that didn't work, um, but uh, if it did, just let us know. Okay. It, that's a fail. <laughs> Can I don't you know. imagine no. your grandmother holding you down with a spider next to your ear and, you know, making the deposit? Oh, boy. At least you probably didn't see it. 
when you're laying on your side. There was that book. Does anyone remember that infomercial? It was the doctor's book of home remedies. And the guy would say something like, you know, to cure poison ivy, try oatmeal. To quiet a colicky baby, run the vacuum. You, no. don't, you don't remember that? No, and that doesn't Anyone? work either. No? No one. No one. And it doesn't work. No. Yeah. I had colic when I was a baby, and one of my nieces did as well. And my sister found out because she was eating onions, that was upsetting the baby's tummy. Yeah. Once she stopped eating onions, the baby was Fixed. fine. Fixed. Yeah, so. It has nothing to do with a vacuum. Oh, okay. It's everything to do with what you're ingesting. Okay. <laughs> Let's send it over now to Andy, Christine, and Frank for a look at what they have coming up at the top of the hour. Guys, you know, more information you didn't know you needed yeah. today. Yeah, we were agreeing with you though, Derek. We actually heard some of those. The so. oatmeal for yeah. sure on the oh, poison ivy. Yes. We've heard yeah. of that. The cooling, that I think, is why it works. You know what cures poison ivy? Don't you, rub you just against. avoid it in the yeah. first place. <laughs> Well, there's True. that, sure. True. Yeah. Taking the fun out of life. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and a hard no to the spider juice, whatever oh, that is. I don't even any, any know. Yeah, form. No, thank you. No, thank you. Juice, guts, what, is it all one synonymous? I don't know. I'm I wouldn't go with butter answer. on a burn either, by the way. Oh, yeah. Did you ever hear that? Put well, butter it sounds on a, nice, but. Butter on butter a burn. Butter on a burn, yeah. Bad idea. Yeah, bad Doesn't idea. Work. Bad oh. idea. I used to hear that all the time, but no. Oh. It's good on biscuits, though. So. It is. Here it is a Monday. I kind of got the heebie-jeebies already. <laughs> and it's but not even Halloween anymore. I, I know, I know. Well, it's almost Christmas now. The Halloween's over, right? Good Lord. Yeah. Yes, it is. You know, it's pretty nice out there, though, Frank, today. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. In fact, I got so many Halloween pictures. This is one of my favorites. This is a little, little oh. guy. Oh. In, the mouse in the mouse trap. Oh, that's good. Aww. That's a good one. <laughs> and in a wagon, so you can just pull them around. It's an easy one. Very creative. But very creative. So thanks for that. In the meantime, I tell you what, I wish I could create this every day for you. Blue skies, beautiful out there. Temperatures right in the upper 70s. 80 degrees now in Sugar Land, 78 at Hobby as well as Bush Galveston at 77. It's going to be a beautiful evening, so head out and enjoy it. 70 degrees at 7. Southeast winds to going calm, so really no issues with the wind. Temperatures right there in the upper 60s to the mid 60s. There's a bit of a mess coming into the western United States, and there's this front meandering from the Rockies into Texas. It's all going to come together as we move into Wednesday, so tomorrow is looking pretty good, but once we get to Wednesday, there's a lot of rain in the forecast. That's Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, even into the overnight Wednesday into Thursday. It's going to get messy around here. So we'll be talking about that at 4 o'clock and in the newscast to come, as you can imagine. But right now for tomorrow night's game, looks terrific. 80 degrees at 4, 70 at 7, 66 at 10. I expect the roof will be open, but I do not have the final word on that just yet. But weather-wise, I don't see why it could be. A nice couple of days. Big front comes in on Wednesday. We'll talk about how much rain and that means for us coming up at four. Okay, Frank, thanks so much. Here's a look at some of the stories that we are following for our news at four o'clock. The Houston Astros are back home for game six of the World Series tomorrow. We are looking at some World Series history when it comes to the Strohs and Minute Maid Park. A look at those interesting facts coming up at four. Yeah, plus your favorite Peloton class could be coming to your next flight. Delta, Delta Airlines announcing that they will add some Peloton classes to their entertainment lineup on their flight. Which ones they're looking at offering? And fall comfort foods without the calories, is it even possible? Is it possible? I don't know. <laughs> Health reporter Haley Hernandez is looking at some recipes that'll make you feel good without all of those big well, heavy Haley calories. Well, Haley would know. Haley would know yep. how to figure that out. She's going to give us the 411, guys. All the pumpkin things, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm just Courtney's doing my just Peloton. Courtney's practicing for her next <laughs> flight. See, so Peloton. are they replacing some of the seats with bicycles, too? <laughs> it's it's I think it's like stretching, right? I think so it's going to be like stretching. Down the aisle. <laughs> to tune in at four yeah. to find We're just going to I'm just going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Work those Coming quads. back from the bathroom. Get in however you can. <laughs> okay. However you want. We'll be watching happening. it for because okay, I am yeah. so curious about this. <laughs> yes. All right, guys. We'll see you then. Sounds good. Bye, guys. I mean, why not exercise when you're in Get flight? up and move. Okay, well, based on the hit 90s film, Sister Act the Musical is a feel-good comedy that has audiences jumping literally to their feet. It premieres tomorrow at Hobby Center, and Joe Sam got a look at the months of training that actually went into this divine production. Hi, Joe. Hey, Courtney Derek. Yeah, everyone has been singing the praises of this Broadway show, which has been nominated for five Tony Awards. Its lead actress playing the role of Dolores Van Cartier, which was also played by Whoopi Goldberg in the film, says that this is a show you don't want to miss. I don't do oohs and ahs. <laughs> 
That's because Simone Gundy is the headliner, playing the star character role of Dolores Van Cartier in the divine musical comedy, Sister Act. A carefree lounge singer witnesses a murder, has to hide in the convent from her boyfriend, um, shakes things up at the convent, just makes a major change and changes hearts and minds. It's definitely very 70s feeling, the music is great. So you'll, you'll see the same great story, you'll feel the same great feelings, you'll cheer for the same people, um, but you'll get to hear some different music and some new stuff. Raise your voice. Rehearsals have been underway for months, and now it's time to bless the souls of the audience when the musical hits the stage of the Hobby Center for the Performing Arts for the first time. It's like one big, long, you had to be there moment. There's something you cannot convey about the experience that happens from rehearsal to putting the show on its feet to closing. It's something that you cannot explain to someone who's not in the room. I love that part of it. I love that as people, as the actors, we have that moment for us and ourselves that we can just look back on fond memories and professionally, we know that we did our job because the audience gives us back everything we felt when we said, yeah, I want to do that show. She wants to breathe new life into the show, just as her character did with the church, touching the emotions of everyone in the pews. Just being an actress that loves the craft and just being able to do the art, being able to take all the crazy parts of my personality and, and give them to people creatively. You get that laugh or you get that aww moment and you get that thing, the thing that you feel when you read the script, it, they give it back to you. And it's so wonderful to know, hey, I executed that right. And she's certainly executing all the right notes with this musical, hoping it inspires and uplifts the souls of those attending. I would like them to leave feeling like Dolores Van Cartier changed their life and made them want to be a part of a sister act or a part of a family um, that maybe is a whole bunch of misfits that just get together and become that thing and so that's I just want people to leave feeling warm and happy and grateful that theater is back such a beautiful singer there. Now again, doors open tomorrow evening at 7.30 at Hobby Center, and the show will run until the 14th. Now, if you're ready to start singing and shouting, head over to our website, HoustonLife.tv, for more information. Really, really cool production. I love Sister Act, the movie, so Me I too. can't wait to see it hit the stage. Her voice is so phenomenal, oh, I and I mean, Houston, we have the, the most theater seats per capita, mm -hmm. second only to New York City. There's so much talent here, and I cannot wait to see this show. Incredible. I want everybody to go out there and have a good time. All Thanks, right, Joe. Joe. Thanks. Well, coming up, tickets are on sale for this year's Nutcracker Market. We're going to share a preview of fan favorite merchants, plus everything you need to know for this unique shopping experience. That's when Houston Life returns. The countdown is on. Nothing ushers in the holiday season like the Nutcracker Market's return. It's a Houston tradition spanning 40 years and the one-stop shop for some critically needed Retail therapy, it works. It makes me feel so good. Here with a preview of what to expect is Houston Ballet Nutcracker Market CEO Patsy Chapman and a dear friend of mine. It's great to see you in good studio. To see you. Congratulations. I know we're excited to bring the November Nutcracker Market back. The only one I have ever missed, Patsy, was 14 years ago when my son Connor was born. We tried to get to the, his first pediatrician appointment, and it, which was right near NRG, and my husband wouldn't let me go in. That's such a bummer, you know, what with a, a newborn husband. baby. <laughs> <laughs> no stroller, so I would have been, no, just teasing. It wouldn't have happened. So this is a special one for you. We missed it last year, of course. It was online, but we're back in person. And for the 40th re-celebration, right? Exactly. I'm yes. so excited. I know you are too. Let's get to it. We've heard all the headlines recently about, you know, the, the shipping and all of these issues going on. Don't even worry about that. Just spend the weekend shopping. You can take all your items home and have it gift wrapped. And this is what we want to do event details first. It's coming up so you guys can mark your calendars. The 40th anniversary, November 11th through the 14th, of course, at NRG Center. It is transformed into one of the largest markets you can go to. Get your tickets now, right? Right, at ATB Business Center. 
listeners at Ticketmaster.com. Okay, that's the way to do it. Let's get started with all the fun stuff because one of the things that we're starting with, which I think is a really good, if you have a girlfriend gift or my favorite things, this is really fun. Tell me about this product. So my drink bomb, they're a new merchant this year, and they're just those little bath bombs for your cocktail. So you just drop it in some sparkling water, add a little bubbly or vodka or whatever you want, and you have an instant cocktail. I'm going to send this one over to you, Patsy, because this one we dropped the Thank bomb you. in already. I'm going to put in, this one is blueberry lemonade. So you just add your topo or you can add uh, champagne or any type of spirit you would like. And I believe you're having lavender lush, is I that am. right? And these stirs are super cute too. Are these available there too? They are. They come in a six pack and you get a variety of styles. I have a beautiful flower. I don't know what you have on Oh, this one says hungover. That must be Derek's. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to Bunt Cake. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. I heard that. Cheers. Oh, cheers. cheers, my friend. Okay, another fan favorite because these are so good. Mine don't even mm. make it home, though. That's mm. the problem with these. Oh, I love these things. And they have the bigger ones that are decorated. So fun for the holidays. He has a great Thanksgiving one that has a big turkey on it. They're yes. adorable. These are great uh, neighbor gifts, teacher gifts, and they always look so good, too. Uh, I'm going to put this in my mouth. This is another one that this you need is, to pick uh, up. This is Chocolate Pizzazz. They're a longtime merchant here in Houston. They have the chocolate-covered popcorn. My personal favorite is they have chocolate covered free toes they're to die for but they have these new snowballs that you drop in a hot cup of milk and you can just watch it melt in this delicious hot chocolate goodness oh I love it and by the way chocolate pizzazz is booth number 1009 and made right here in Houston okay families and kids I love this because if you're thinking stocking stuffers or what can I give a neighbor girl I'm blown away at this because if you love s'mores listen to this is amazing it is this is a new merchant it's called fire bugs uh, and they have all kind of gadgets for campfires and camping so they have all of your marshmallow this is a fishing rod okay that, what do uh, you do with this well so let's see it's a little tangled up here okay. but so basically you just hold that oops over your uh, campfire Stop and roast it. your marshmallows these are fun too because they extend so you put your marshmallows on there and you can hold that over the the fire I love this and, roll. and then this is another one that you just put in you, yes. You have, is this a microwave? It, it, it can be, but it also has a, a attachment. You can use it over uh, the fire, not too close to it. Right. And it holds your s'mores together. Okay, very cool. I'm definitely getting this. Fire okay, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm like a squirrel here. What's happening here? So this is Seashell. She was new with us last year, and she has beautiful uh, bracelets and jewelry. I have a couple of hers on today, but she's really known for her painted seashells, and she does a variety of decorative things. This is her holiday collection. She's one of my favorite new merchants because I, they're just so unique and different. She has napkin ring holders and ornaments and they're just beautiful. And that is booth number 1136. By the way, this is a mother-daughter team, which I think is really cool. And we did feature them for breast mm. cancer awareness yeah. when they did their special stack. That was really fun. Okay, what is that? This looks like a repurposed. It is. So this is Maria Victoria. She's been with us for a while and she's known for those beautiful recycled the, plastic oh, woven, the woven handbags. bags. Yes, and the so tote bags. She, yeah, so she's come out with kind of a new item that this year, which is the recycled burlap, and it has attachments you can add on to it. And she's got a variety of colors, and they're just really fun and, and on trend now. I will say her booth always has a line. This is booth 1238. This is a definite accessory. This is a talker bag, as I like to say, mm -hmm. kind of one of those statement pieces. Love that. Okay, another one, Pomp and Circumstance. It's another favorite local boutique of mine. I'm glad they're back. And they have a lot of apparel and accessories, but this is new for her, and it's a great uh, cross body bag and it has all of these interchangeable straps that are so colorful and fun. I love that because it's a great girlfriend gift. Again, if you're doing one of these parties, we do a favorite things party. That would be really fun as well. And Pomp and Circumstance is booth 248. And moving, okay, these slippers, when you guys were setting up for this, I thought these are the cutest things I've ever seen. These are mine. Those I are yours? The minute she sent them in, I said, I'm buying these. <laughs> so I, love, I love them. You know, she said everybody can use a little smile right now. And so she has these in all colors. So uh, it's a hit from my Jewelry Girl Boutique. That is awesome. Okay, booth number 1457 from uh, Jewelry Girl Boutique. And then also the outerwear, P ponchos. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is such a great statement. Um, th is this a new booth for you guys no, too? No, it's Shanny Girl. She's oh, been yeah. with us for a while, but she has a great variety of capes and 
cape jackets, which is what the front one is there. It's really a cape, but then it, it cinches around the waist. So it looks somewhat jacketish, but it's, it's a cape. Very comfortable, easy to put on, not too heavy. Absolutely. Perfect this is just a sampling. How many vendors will you have this year? We have about 260 this year, 73 new merchants this year. That is awesome. And by the way, it's a great shopping extravaganza. We love a little retail therapy, but the storyline here is over the last 40 years, been able to provide scholarships and money to students within the company. Absolutely, and support all these small businesses that are really in need of good support today. It really, it is so true. Shop small, shop local. Here's all the event details there on the screen. As you see, November 11th through the 14th, and general admission tickets are $20 at NRG Center. Discount general admission tickets are available at HEB Business Centers or Ticketmaster. Get your tickets now. That's what I would recommend. All persons, regardless of age, do have to have a ticket. Patsy, it's always great to see you. I'm excited. My own countdown clock is running right awesome. now. We'll Thank see you, you soon. Absolutely. Alrighty. We'll have fun all weekend long. By the way, it's a great place to get those nutcrackers, too. My mom and I get one every year. For more information, visit nutcrackermarket.com or simply call 713-535-535. 3231. We're going to now send things over to Lauren Kelly, who is serving up some homemade food for a queen. What's up, girl? That's right, Courtney. Look at that. I'm in the kitchen. I am ready to prepare some delicious comfort food. You see that? That is Cajun pasta. I'm going to show you how the queen herself, Esther, is making it. That's when Houston Life returns. I promise I'm going to do my best, okay? You're going to teach me? Yes. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> If you're looking for a new place to grab some delicious soul food, I'm talking the Cajun kind that you know is so Southern and so good that only a mom could make it. Right here is where you need to be. This is Esther the Queen, where you obviously know where the nickname came from. You have how many children? Six. Six, and you have been cooking for them probably for so many years, and you've always been the mom to carry everything, right? Yes. So of this deliciousness that we have seen today on the show, one of your most popular items here on the menu is the Cajun pasta, and we are learning what goes into that very popular item today. Let's get started. Okay, here we go right now. Now, okay, pay attention. Oh, okay. Pay attention. She knows how I am in the kitchen. That's what happens every time. <laughs> okay, we have our family secret sauce here. Now, I ain't going to tell you what we got in it now. I didn't but, think uh, you were going to. Okay. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is, this is our secret sauce that I already made up already. So we're going to put a little, just a kick to it. We're going to put a little this season here in it. Okay, and then we're going to put some of this in there. Okay. You know what a lot of a lot of chefs always tell me? It's about how you season it, which is where all the flavor comes in, right? The spices. That's right. Obviously. That's right. Okay. So you see all these different flavors of season. We're gonna put some of that in there. It's so okay. bright and colorful. Yes. Yes. You're gonna stir it up a little and bit. And your more. sauce was already hot. Yes, it's already hot. It's got a little season in there too. You know, already mixed in. But I'm all just right. kind of showing you some more. We got some of this kind of season. And I gotta show. She's a fast cooker. How am I okay. supposed to be paying attention? <laughs> okay. Now. Okay. So well, I would put my. Uh, Vegetables in right now, but you know, you got to have that sauteed it and put it in there okay. and everything sauteed it and put it in there. Oh, and this. And the meat, okay, you got your shrimp that goes in there. Mm -hmm. We're going to put some of your shrimp in there. A couple of shrimps. Let's drop, let's just okay. drop the whole bowl in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I can take my own measurement for sure. <laughs> yes, yeah, so and then let's put some of the sauces and the chicken okay. in there. You see, we're just going to drop all let's that drop. in there. Just drop okay. it all in, yeah. Drop it all in there. You okay. see, it's going to cook up really, really great there. If you guys okay. could smell, it's like a mixture of sweet and, and savory all at once. Yes. It really is coming out of this sauce yes. right now. Yes. Well, Esther, you are doing a fantastic job. I know that Derek and Courtney have the dish to try right now that's yes. already finished. We would put this over pasta, right? Yes. This is the actual pasta. finished dish. Yes. So, Derek and Courtney, why don't you take a bite and let us know what you think of this one. Oh, I've already taken a dozen bites. Delicious. It's a 20 out of 10. Mm -hmm. It's a home run. Please give us a hug it's a 20 us. out of 10 home run for sure. You got it, guys. Thank you so much and enjoy. There's lots of love in this mm -hmm. plate. Thank you so much. Very nice. Great location, too. Sure. After the break, a look what's coming up on tomorrow's show, including a look at the new season of a hit show. And as we head to break, let's check in with Kevin Frazier for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight, including rumors about a new Hollywood couple. Hey, Kevin.
Yes. Derek and Courtney, ET will be delivering the news to you from Hawaii right here all week long. So make sure you tune in for the latest on Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson. Are they really a couple? Come on now. We'll tell you what we know. That's tonight at 630 right here on KPRC2. But don't go anywhere. Houston Life will be right back. Tomorrow on Houston Live, cooking and diabetes, how to skip the sugar but still add flavor to everyday dishes like casseroles and muffins and so much more. Also stars from Netflix's Lock and Key are chatting about the brand new season of this hit fantasy series. Looking forward to that. And before we go, after enjoying this nice lunch and some of the uh, the gifts from the Nutcracker I know. comment market, <laughs> we do have time for one more viewer comment. I love this. Check this out. That is beautiful. That's beautiful. Let's get to one last comment. So Christine writes in, back in the 80s, a home perm completely fried my hair. My mom told me to put Vaseline in it for <laughs> deep conditioning. You can't wash that out with anything. And I had to go to school oh. the next day with that in my hair. It turns out literally the only thing that removed it was peanut butter. Oh, Christine. Yeah, Vaseline in the hair. I can't imagine that would Remember be Remember when you did your own perm? Remember that? I'm sorry, it wasn't a perm. Well, my mom used to give me perms when I was in eighth and ninth grade because my grandma would do these tight little curl yeah. perms, so she did that to me. The boys, that's that's what they're doing now. All the high school boys are perming their hair now. Everything old is new again. It's back? It's You're back. kidding. Okay. No, it's back. I'll have to do a segment about that. Okay, well, that does it for us today at Houston Life. Thanks so much for joining us. And we're going to send over to Andy Christine now. Andy, perm? Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> you could totally pull it up. Okay, so the frosted tips are out, like the beaver bay. Oh my like, goodness. Are those it's out? a thing. They're you doing really it. went there, didn't you? Well, I mean, gosh, now that we have perms back in style. Goodness. <laughs>